Hey everybody, and welcome back to the next part of my Creating a Great Tone series. I'm up to well into the 20s now in this series, but I wanted to do a little bit of a different video this time. No guitar in hands, not gonna play any guitar at all. Um, this was more a request I've had a bunch of times, and recently somebody really sent me an email and said, could you please show me how you would handle this particular situation? And that situation is this. Some folks wanna dial in a sound um, with you know, full speaker cab emulation or IRs or whatever they choose, uh, or stock cabs, whatever they choose to do their speaker emulation and uh, microphone emulation, right? And they wanna be able to send that in a live situation to front of house uh, so that the front of house guy doesn't have to mic a cab on stage. Um, the player already knows what they've dialed in at home. They're happy with their sound. That's going to be what goes out to front of house, provided our uh, front of house engineer doesn't do something to mess it up on us, which is always a distinct possibility. Um, but they also, at the same time, want to be able to take a feed out to monitor it on stage through a real guitar cabinet, okay? We know there's a lot of solutions now, such as uh, the Mission Gemini, which has the Empower knob, the uh, Line 6 Power Cab and Power Cab Plus, which does speaker emulation, so that we can work around that, right? Something like the Power Cab gives us a direct out that we can actually put speaker emulation on so we can avoid that problem altogether. But let's say that we still just want to go into maybe something like uh, what, what's it, the Seymour Duncan Power Stage uh, 170, I believe. Don't quote me. I hope I got the name of the product right. The little uh, pedal board power amps. And we want to go into just a normal speaker cab with that, right? A normal guitar speaker cab. Or maybe we just want to go into the power amp in on our guitar tube guitar head, right? Uh, and in through our speaker cab. So how can we do that so that we can send front of house out um, with some speaker emulation, stock cabs, IRs, whatever we choose from our Helix, and then also be able to feed a non-speaker emulated um, uh, tone to our power amp to, to monitor with a normal guitar cab so that we just get that sound on stage, right? It is possible. Uh, let's dive over to HX Edit and we'll take a look at what we have. Now, there may be other ways to do this that I haven't thought of and that's fine. This is just uh, when I got the question, I've had the question quite a few times, so I thought maybe it's time to do a video on it. Um, this is the way that I thought would work. Now, the only problem is the way that I'm going to do this is going to limit our ability to maybe do uh, other things with our preset, okay? So I'm gonna use my normal um, template preset that, that uh, I have set up with a couple alterations. I'm gonna do it in mono, so I changed some of these to mono um, blocks, right? The delay and the, the EQ and the compressor at the end. Um, now, what we have is no amp or cab right now, okay? So normally what I would do is I would pick an amp model and I don't know, let's just go with the, the Placator Dirty, okay? And then after that, I would pick the cab that I wanted and uh, let's say a 412 Greenback. That would be the normal way of doing things. Our path uh, one would go down to path 2A and then out to our output. I have set to multi, but whatever we're gonna send this, if we're gonna send it to front of house, we pick XLR if that's what the, the front of house guy has decided to take as an out off of our helix. That's fine, I'll just leave it on multi right now. The problem is, if we then wanna send this at the same time to a, a, a separate power amp into a guitar cab, uh, we're not gonna be able to do that because we're going to be speaker emulating a speaker, which is probably not gonna give us the results we want, right? So what would I do in that case? Okay, well, what I would do is I would say, take this here and copy it, paste it down here, go up here and clear that block. And then I can take this cab and I can move it all the way over to the end. Also going to come over here and just put a simple gain block for no reason. Don't worry about that right now. I can actually even just turn it off, okay? Now, what we have is a slightly different situation. This gain block is doing nothing, mind you. We have the amp heading into my split crossover, into the delay, into the verb, into the EQ, into the compressor, and into a cab now. You might say, well, why did I do that? Well, this now allows me to add a point before the cab to split off and send it to a different set of outputs, which is what we can then use to feed our real guitar cab and po or power amp and guitar cab. So watch what I do with the game block here. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to slide it right to before where the cab is. I'm gonna pull it down to the next path, okay? 
So it's going to be not, not the next path, but path 2B, we would call it. This would be path 2A, this would be path 2B. But this isn't it. I'm still going to have to take this merge block, we call it, and drag it down as well so that now we have a separate output down here. Okay, so what we have now, if we look at it, we have our signal path amp going into our split, my little split crossover, which hopefully isn't complicated because I use this all the time, going to path 2A into our delay, into our reverb, into my little normal mastering chain I use, EQ and compression. I'm now taking a split off of that and sending it down to the path 2B before it gets emulated by the speaker cab, okay? So this will now send our signal through a speaker cab to this output, which I could send set at, let's say, XLR, okay? And then we would send this to our front of house mixer, who would then be able to take our speaker emulated patch, which I just created, and he would have that with the speaker emulation of a Greenback 25 with a 121 ribbon mic set at seven inches back, okay? But what I did before the speaker had a chance to emulate is I split that signal off, sent it through this placeholder gain block, which isn't even turned on. I mean, if we did or didn't, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, zero dB, fine. We've just needed another path, path 2B, to send this output, I'm gonna choose, my, sorry, not XLR, quarter inch outputs. And now on our Helix, I could take the quarter inch output, send that over to, um, my power amp into my guitar speaker cabinet and you're good as gold. Now, what this does do is it causes us a bit of a problem because we no longer can use this split path for any other special processing with delays or reverbs or whatnot. So it does limit us slightly, but it does give us the ability to do this. So it might take a little bit more thought in our patch creation and maybe up here, you're not gonna be using this split crossover thing like I do and you could use the split for a different type of processing in lieu of not being able to do it down on the second path, that makes sense, okay? So that will get us what we want to do. We'll just have to think our patch through a little bit better, but this still raises another question. This is a question I've had a lot, especially since I've been doing a couple of videos with the uh, Power Cab Plus, which is sitting down here beside me. A lot of folks have said, you know, I've come, been come to know in my videos is using this little mastering section where I have an EQ and a, and a compressor at the end. Usually I have my speaker cab up here. So they say, well, how is it affecting it, the sound now when the speaker cab with the power cab is actually after our, our little uh, mastering section? So the speaker cab isn't now going to be feeding into the effects, but the effects are going to be feeding into the speaker cab. It's a very good question. In my experience, it's not a massive difference, okay? Um, is there a difference? Well, there's, there's probably got to be a difference. I mean, it, it is changing the order of the effects. So now our delay and our reverb and our compression EQ that I've put on is going into a speaker cabinet, and then the speaker cabinet is processing all of that information versus the amp going into a speaker cabinet, and now we have the speaker cab emulated sound going through the effects, right? So you might think, oh, no, it's going to destroy our patch. Well... There's only one surefire way to, to check this out and to make sure that it's not as dramatic a difference as some folks might think. So I set up a little preset here that I called pre versus post cab. And what I did is I did two snapshots and I put an amp model, again, I think I used a placator dirty, going into a cab and all this same stuff you saw on the other, on the other preset we were just looking at. And then I set it up so that snapshot two turns the cab off that's before the effects and turns the cab on that's after the effects, okay? So um, how does this affect the sound? Well, we would have to actually be able to go back and forth effortlessly between them to kind of really compare them. So that's why I set up these snapshots, okay? So as much as I threatened you at the beginning that I would not play guitar, I'm gonna do a little tiny bit of playing just to do a comparison here between the two situations so that we can kind of put to rest how we feel about it, right? Maybe some people are gonna go, oh, I hear a massive difference, it's a deal breaker. You know, I don't think that. That's my personal opinion. I do hear a subtle difference. Is it enough to really warrant saying, no, we can't put the compressor before the cab or can't put it after or whatever? No, because if you know your situation going into dialing in your sound, you can easily compensate for whatever those differences are gonna be and you're just gonna dial it in the way that you like it for your particular situation. So I think it's a bit of a moot point anyways, but some folks would probably like to see it. So let me grab my guitar, I will be right back and we'll take a listen and compare the two, all right? Okay, so I'm back with my guitar now and we're gonna just compare these and see if we can tell a difference 
when I snap, switch between the snapshots with the cab before the effects and the cab after the effects, okay? So here is the cab before the effects, okay? <laughs> Here it is after. Let me play while I switch back and forth so you can kind of hear a more seamless uh, switch between them. Okay, here's the cab before. Watch up here on HX Edit as you'll see cab pre effects and cab post effects. Okay, so here we go. What do you guys think? Is there a difference? It's gonna be maybe a slight difference to the effects, the delays, the reverb, right? Versus, you know, sending the cab through that versus sending it through the cab, right? So yes, there's a difference. Is it a deal breaker or so dramatic that one is preferable over the other? I personally don't think so. Others might disagree with me. I, that's perfectly fine, you know, for some folks and the way that they do things, maybe it is just, not going to work doing it one way or the other, right? Uh, I don't find it's that big a difference and it's probably something that can kind of be compensated for elsewhere if we find there's a frequency difference or, or whatever. The, 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 the difference that it has on the effects doesn't really bother me that much and I could work around it either way. So hopefully that answers that question. I know a lot of folks have brought that up with me and I said, well, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those tough calls, right? I don't want to say one way or the other that, oh, it's all, it is like this or it's not like, it, not up to me to decide that. That's going to be a personal preference thing. And some folks get maybe very bothered by little things like that. And other folks, it doesn't bother as much. And no, neither way is right. Neither way is wrong. It's just personal preference, right? So I just wanted to do that little demo so you could hear for yourself and uh, come to your own conclusions with it. All right. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. It's a bit of a different topic, right? But uh, I, I've had enough people ask me that haven't sort of been able to figure out how to do that. Uh, like I said, there are, it does sort of uh, limit what you can do with your preset building when you do have to take that little split off to send it out to a different output. But unfortunately, that's kind of what we're stuck with at the moment with this. And there may be other ways that I haven't thought of to do this, like I said before. And, you know, please leave me some comments below. Love to discuss that stuff with you. So anyways, I hope that helped some folks. And I hope it was a video that was worth doing. And I hope uh, somebody can dial in their patch to be more useful now um, in a live setting. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please like the video and share it if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Really appreciate all the support. And I will be back soon uh, with some more content. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And ciao for now. Take care.